Hello YouTube, um, and everybody out there who's uh, watched my videos, or my video, I've only got one really, um, but uh, some of you may have noticed that I uh, said in my last video that I didn't know if I was going to make any more, but I've changed my mind, I've gotten enough interest that I think I'm going to go ahead and continue with these. And uh, this is the continuation from the last one, and here we are going to concentrate on the eccentric straps. And that's what these are. There are six of them all together, and uh, this is how they come from the manufacturer. These are made by Ken Schroeder. Um, they are excellent, excellent castings. I wouldn't discourage anyone from buying anything from manufacturer. Yeah, they're beautiful. You'll notice in, at the inside there is just slightly out of round. The reason is, is you've got to slice them in half in order to complete these. And here's one that I've already done that with. And um, what I did was I soft soldered it together. After I sliced it in half on my bandsaw, I machined these surfaces perfectly smooth and then soft soldered it together so it could be mounted in my tooling. So that's what I'm going to show you go do now. And here I'm back with two of them completed or almost completed I should say. They're not truly completed but they're close. And uh, that's what it looks like after after turning in a lathe and uh, machining some things in the mill. Um, I will be showing how to do that, or telling you how to do that, I should say, because it's rather boring. You know. One of the more complicated things is cutting the groove in it. If you look up there, you'll see two little holes. Those little holes are very important for this type of bearing. This is what's known as a friction bearing. The steel is rubbing upon the bronze, and um, it's in direct contact. There are no ball bearings here, no roller bearings. It is just steel against bronze. And uh, this is why it's also called a friction bearing, is because it can build up very high friction if it's not properly lubricated. So um, here I, I, I'm not quite done milling. So. Um, and I didn't drill that hole for some reason, but it will all be done in the end. And uh, you'll see it when it's all finished. And up here, <coughs> I've got oil journals. Those connect to those two little holes that you saw on the inside there. And in there, there's a little 16th inch holes. And they will lubricate this quite well. Um, I did deviate a little bit <coughs> on the, both of these and then I made the top halves an eighth inch. <coughs> so uh, my theory being more oil and uh, more lubrication the better on a friction bearing. So that's uh, how I've done all of these. And uh, this, of course, fits on the crankshaft. And that's pretty close to where its home will be. Not quite. <laughs> no adjustment yet, of course. So let me go finish the rest of these. And uh, then I'll. Uh, Well, maybe before that, maybe I should tell you about how uh, the processes I went through 
to make these or to make these two <coughs> well, let me take it take it apart and show you what they look like first and uh, as you can see the bronze is very slippery against <laughs> very slippery so this is what what one looks like without the eccentric in it <coughs> first thing I milled this and milled this milled this milled this milled this and once that was done I got these to the proper heights and then of course I flipped it over and got these two surfaces done once that was done then I had some surfaces which I could um, it was easier to mount in my four jaw chuck and lathe so that's exactly what I did and then I surfaced this cut the recesses and then bored out the center section so it wasn't oval anymore and then I cut the uh, groove in with a special cutter I made out of high speed steel and uh, here you can see the groove fairly fairly well or you will be after camera focuses yeah that's about right though. there it is and uh, you can see the two little holes to the oil journals and the groove and uh, once it's all bolted together it's captive on the eccentric and cannot move Hi, and then I drilled these holes <coughs> and those I should have completed drilling but didn't quite don't know why I didn't finish that one but these holes then I drilled out to a larger size um, before tapping the bottom holes these are uh, I, I drilled those to clearance and I drilled these to tapping size and then uh, before unsoldering tapped the bottom parts and then drilled those out so that's how I did that it's a uh, it, it's really a simple simple sort of piece to make um, all of them are <coughs> and uh, here I've got them all done and totally completed and so I'll just let you look at that for a moment let's get in a little closer though it would be nice to be able to actually see them <laughs> sorry I'm totally an amateur when it comes to making videos so you can see that I've milled that uh, part out of them that is to accent except the eccentric blade yeah. so yeah they're all done now and uh, the uh, the one that's not mounted it just needs to be mounted that's all there is to it Maybe I can show you a little bit closer here. If I can get my camera to focus. A little bit closer. And the eccentric blade will be made to fit that groove. And, uh, yeah, this isn't working too well. Problem with raw video. Um, you also notice that I don't have these finished as far as surface finish. I'm not going to polish them until the very last step. That's way in the future. 
once the engine is pretty much completed. Um, there you can see my countersunk holes for the flathead screws that are going to be driven into the uh, eccentric blades which go up and connect to the expansion link. So there it is and uh, they're all done and that completes them and now we can move on to much more exciting things. I know these uh, these last couple of videos have uh, this one included uh, have been kind of boring and uh, not really showing too much. But this next one is going to be much more much more exciting because I'll actually show some milling because it's a very different part. I'm going to be working on. Um, those of you who are beginning machinists um, may say, where do we start with this? But this is the next part. It is the crosshead guide. This is a, a somewhat complex thing to make. It looks simple and it in a lot of ways it is simple but it's also quite complex you can see I've got some screws already mounted in it but this hole has to be bored and uh, there's a lot of a lot of uh, little stuff and I'll show that to you um, but what we start with this is how this part started out is as a rough casting like this um, really <laughs> nothing done to it now I did mill this surface flat already which uh, is to allow it to be able to sit flat because the next part is to mill off the top and uh, well it is what it is so that is um, where we're going to start in the next video I think And uh, but I appreciate you giving me some views and uh, we'll see what you think of this one, once we start on this one